Well, here she is all done. Excuse the noise. I've got the door open. It's busy. Ah, oh, what do we do to her? Well, so this is the 1979 JMP 2204 50 watt Marshall Master Volume. Um, so when it brought in, sounding really bright and really nasty. The main culprit of that was it was completely under biased. It was pulling 10 milliamps on the bias. Customer said, yeah, I like it, but yeah, it's always had to have the treble and presence all the way off, which wasn't uncommon in some of these, but yeah, bringing the bias up to the correct volt, um, milliamps range brought it to life. The low end came back. Um, someone had put a snubber capacitor over this plate resistor for V1, on one side of V1, which would have been bleeding off treble. So it was kind of like a band-aid. It wasn't solving the actual issue. Took that off, didn't need that. To minimize some of the extra treble, I have removed the um, uh, treble bypass cap, which goes on the volume, which when you get up to 10, it's not really in the circuit, but a real common little mod that a lot of people do to these. And it, the customer plays single calls, so I've taken it off anyway. Um, what else? So yeah, being biased so low, the output valves, which are a pair of electroharmonics, which are very good EL34s, especially when these were put in here, have had pretty much little to no wear, so we didn't, I didn't bother changing those. 40 year old capacitors. Now, there's lot, there's two schools of thought, just change them anyway, because they're old, because they go bad. And then the other one is if the amp's been used regularly, you don't really need to change them. If they're used regularly, they actually last a hell of a lot longer. But in this case, when I had it on the Variac, when I was test playing it, when you hit a note, the power wattage that it was pulling from the wall would drop dramatically. So these were working really hard to keep up with power delivery. So I've replaced these with F and T's. And now it, when you play the voltage on the Variac stays solid and it doesn't give up. So again, that's giving it way more bottom end delivery um, and performing as it should. So yeah, they were changed because they were not performing as they should were, as they should have been. Uh, fitted one ohm, 1% 1 resistors across the cathode to make biasing a lot quicker and simpler later on in, in life because hopefully we'll get another 40 years out of this thing. Um, change the screen grid resistors, the old ones. I'd never seen this style of them before. Could be Russian, but they are 40 years old and they really should be changed. They take a battering. So yeah, new ones are those in. Uh, oh yeah, change bias caps. Again, those caps really should be replaced because that supplies your, bio your negative bias voltage. You want to keep them in good shape. So, as with, with vintage amps, minimum, minimum changes because you don't want to ruin them. And um, yeah, that's it. It's been sat on the bench. Got a nice steady bias now at 60% dissipation, 65%. Didn't want to go all out. It doesn't need it. It doesn't really help too much. But yeah, original transformers. Um, you can see. Uh, 79 on the code there. Um, it's the original build tag. Teresa. Actually, interestingly, it was originally from a combo. Um, but this one I received in a head. Um, yeah, original Transformers, all with the 79 dates on them. Not quite sure. I need to look up that. But this one's definitely a 79. All Drake Transformers are definitely originals. F and T's are a little bit smaller. I do have kept the original daily uh, filter caps for the customer and any, all the bits I've removed from it. They will be going back to the customer. Just so if it ever wants to be put back to 100% original, we can do it. Okay, there's a 79 code there. Right, uh, time to button it up and give you a play test. See you in a minute. Sorry, just a second thing, just as I'm putting this all back together again. This amp's been especially nice to do because of where it came from. 
not originally obviously, but I think this was sold second hand. In my first job was at Machine Head Music in Hitchin. I worked both at Hitchin and Harlow. And as you can see here, it's just before the codes changed, which I believe is 96, around 95, 96, which is when I started working there back in the day. So, and um, the owner, Jeff Pumfret, who sadly passed a few years ago, who was like a second father to me, this has been an especially nice job to do. And um, a bit of a labor of love. I'm not gonna charge the customer too much because um, one, these are my favorite amps. And um, yeah, it's just a bit special. So, see you at the playtest. Back with the audio demo. Um, and we're gonna change things up from now on. Apparently, according to my eldest daughter, my YouTube videos are unprofessional. So I'm trying something a bit different. Um, got a few lights out and a tripod. Um, and what I'm also gonna be doing, I'm gonna be recording the room. Um, but from now on as well, amps, I'm going to use a reactive load from uh, Sura IR, and I'm gonna use the stock IRs in it. It's for consistency purposes. Um, for all heads, um, I might change it around just to get some different tones, but we'll always start with the stock uh, 4x12 cabinet loaded with greenbacks on the blended 57 Royal 121 IR on this. That's then feeding an HX stomp. The only effect on there will be a room reverb, which I will keep the same on every video I do. Um, I've just found the sounds that I prefer. The, this cabinet's very similar to this one. This is loaded with greenbacks. Um, as you see, it's got two greenbacks and two V30s in there, but um, I can, I've can i done it so I can switch between the two if I, if I fancy, or have all, all four. But anyway, that's beside the point. So yeah, every amp demo now will go through this. Heads will always use this 4x12, so I might change them around just for fun later on. And then with combos, I haven't decided what IR I'm going to use in here, but there's some nice open back IRs in here, which when I get to going through the playtest of um, combo repairs, we'll pick one. And if we find one we like, we'll just stick with that from now on. So uh, on to the amp. So previously you would have seen what I've done with this and serviced it. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Um, obviously previous demos I've been playing my Telecaster. I thought it only apt to use this with that. Um, so yeah, we've got a 1979 JMP 50 watt 2204. Uh, the controls as it is at the moment are all set to around three and four. Uh, masters at three. This is the great thing about this thing. You can just get the amp into the sweet spot, which living where I do, I've got neighbors on one side of me. I don't think they'd appreciate me doing these videos with the volumes I like to, especially in lockdown, everyone's at home, so I haven't got the daytime when everyone's at work to make this noise anymore. So this is coming really handy. Um, yeah, so everything's sort of between three and four, very much like Angus Young's settings. If you watch the um, Premier Guitar Rundown, which is just pornography for martial lovers, I think you can all agree. Um, so we'll start with the game around straight up five o'clock and go from there. So uh, this is not a Gibson. This started life out as a vintage uh, um, SG copy. Um, the John Hornby Skews, Trevor Wilkinson, Chinese guitars. Um, I did, I cut off the headstock. I'm such a headstock logo whore, I'm sorry. I can't help it, I couldn't help myself, but I've owned three real Gibson SGs over the years, and everyone has been, had a problem, especially down the neck on a dead spot where you'd hit a note and it'd just, it'd just die almost instantly. I tried, they were awful. Pick this thing up for next to nothing. It's a rare one because it's actually a proper SG shape with the binding as well. A lot of them now have that offset ESP Viper look and no binding, so. And I've angersized it a little bit. I make no apologies. So, oh uh, yeah, here we go. Um, oh yeah, fitted with Duncan Antiquity, so the pickups are worth probably four times as much as the guitar. Um, and I've had these since 
98, I want to say, when they came out originally, when I worked at Machine Head Music, who you saw the old stick on the back of here, and they are fantastic pickups. But anyway, so on the bridge, we're not doing angles yet, but um, right, wound up. Ooh. about seven. trick run it off to about six or seven. <laughs> I'm not playing the riffs right because I don't want a copyright stroke, thank you. <laughs> and then wind it up for seven. <laughs> If you use the low input, max the master, this channel is essentially turns this amp into a plexi. If you go, oh, 2203 plexis, they're, they're completely different. They really are not. There's, there's literally a couple of components and wires different. And, all right, there are other minor differences, but it's still essentially the same amp. So, master's on full bring in the preamp game now basically it behaves like the volumes on a um, plexi Whoop. bit of clipping
especially that channel as well is really good for using pedals and like it's a really underrated part of the 2204 2203 family is the low gain they make really good clean powerful sounding and um, um, we all know the magic here um i want to put the master up a little bit bring in some more power amp going <laughs> a little bit there um, this is generally where I'd run mine I have the bass cranked up a little bit more um, I like the thump it gives <laughs> Thank you. 